Good evening, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, the talk I'm going to give this evening is very wide-ranging. Um, and I'll start with a picture of Mother Earth, um, because what we're talking about this evening is of global concern. And it's uh, going to affect all of us, and, uh, and particularly future generations and our, our children for, for many years to come. And so it's something that uh, is very dear to our heart. And um, here we are in our 40th year anniversary of the practice. And uh, what we're looking at now over the history of the practice is how uh, we push this agenda forward. And in preparing for this talk this evening, I came across this slide from 1973, some 30, 34 years ago which um, particularly resonated uh, with myself, having been bought, bought up during the 60s with a, with a sort of art family and the whole, whole Earth catalogue um, and biodiversity of the 60s and the hippie era um, is something that is very dear to my own heart. And coming across this particular uh, slide reminded me of uh, the experiments my father would make um, with biomass. Um, so, and in this slide, you see the uh, the solar collector, the biomass collector, the use of uh, grey water systems, uh, solar collectors, and wind turbines, which uh, is particularly apropos today. And of course, much of this goes back to uh, Buckminster Fuller and his Dymaxion world, and um, the relationship, the long relationship that Norman had with with Bucky back then, and this indeed is a model that we still have in our office today. We're working in 53 countries around the world, um, very diverse attitudes um, from Europe to UK to North America and elsewhere, and now increasingly in the Far East. And wherever we are in the world, this is something that we take incredibly, uh, incredibly um, importantly. Whatever the scale of the project, whether it's a major infrastructure project like uh, Hong Kong Airport or the towers in Commerce Bank or even bridges that uh, serve a function environmentally in, in southern central France. So if we look back at some of the history of the practice and some of the themes that run through all of the projects up to the, today, that idea that um, Bucky's Dome could have been used for the Willis Faber building uh, one of Norman's sketches um, that shows how the project could have been a regular, straightforward uh, office tower seen, seen here, and um, how, in fact, he turned that diagram around to create a building that not only had a green roof, but used escalators as its vertical transportation, and it created an environment, a corporate environment, that... Uh, enabled change over many years. Most importantly, what the first raised floor system in 75 that enabled Willis Faber Duma, the insurance company, to remain in this building unchallenged throughout the uh, computer revolution. And so here's a contemporary photograph, 2001, exactly the same uh, view. Um, and probably the lady you see on the uh, on the right-hand side is probably the daughter of the one you see on the left-hand side. Um, and the idea that uh, skins around buildings, the cladding systems, can somehow modify how air, light, and energy is used in a building, seen here in the East Anglia building, again, is a constant recurrent theme. If we look at Hong Kong, Shanghai Bank, and the influences Willis Faber had, um, you'll see in the projects that some of these early ideas are splitting the tower down into a series of, of uh, discrete elements with uh, transfer floors um, and use of escalators for the vertical transportation and moving the cores to the outside of the building. Um, and then indeed using the uh, river water for many of the heat exchange systems in the building. And also urbanistically opening up the street uh, at, at uh, ground level so that um, new public spaces can be created. Something that we take very passionately, this is our studio in London. We use a lot of uh, 
large-scale models as the Hearst model being built, um, and a, a very young workforce of some 880 people now.